Do you think that Barry Humphreys took a sneaky pleasure in the friction between these two characters of his invention, who could not visibly or culturally, as you say, be further apart? Yes, I think, I mean, what they did was reflected his genius, really, to think you could have two such diverse characters, both with this extraordinary capacity sort of to offend, but in such different ways. I mean, what I found fascinating was that um, once um, once Dame Medna became Dame Medna with the spectacles and the, and, and the frock and, and her whole persona, uh, or once Celeste put on that filthy crimpling suit, they became Dame Edna and Celeste. They were no longer Barry Humphreys. And he used to say he had no control over them once they once they took um, the form or, or once they, um, I suppose, dressed and, and ready to play their part. So it, it, it was amazing, just so extremely different, but yet both um, so well um, uh, magnetic in a way, as repulsive as Celeste was. Well, there's actually a whole stack of YouTube videos now of people my age and younger <laughs> discovering Les Patterson for the first time and reacting. And I have to say, I'm probably not the correct generation for the Les Patterson humour. But when you sit down and you are confronted with one of these performances, he's very funny. He transcends generations, this humour, and you can't help but laugh. And part of it has to be the other people around him who are getting increasingly more concerned about the interview they're part of. But look, Les got up to a lot of things while he was on the loose in the world. What was the height of Les's career? I think he would say that um, being cultural attaché to the court of St James's was probably the um, was probably the highlight. I think the Far East would have been pretty amazing at the time, but I think uh, the court of St James's was the epitome. Um, and he he would say that um, the the Prince of Wales, now the King, was very relieved to be uh, when when he did when they did meet. He was very relieved to be in the royal box, and so would was at a safe enough distance from Les's extraordinary salivary gland, which seemed to he said could um, could hit someone six rows back in a theatre. So I think the king, as he now is, was um, relieved to be further away. <laughs> but um, he, uh, yes, he, he really, um, he had, his reach was extraordinary, really. And as you say, I think I said in the article, the fact that Les was stuck in the 70s somehow made him, I said in the article, less toxic, but perhaps it made him no less toxic. I mean, there was no one more toxic than Les, really, but less threatening, I think, because he was really um, a figure from nearly half a century ago.